Race number 10 of the 5th season of the SRA Duracell Cup Series rolls into Nashville for the first time in its history. Good evening everybody and welcome here as we get ready for what should be some good short track racing under the lights at the Nashville Speedway. Obviously, we were supposed to be at Pikes Peak International for what was going to be, I believe, the fourth time in the history of this series, but unfortunately, uh, we ran into some issues. We tried broadcasting it live, as you guys are aware, and it ended up crashing. I tried going in and doing it in replay mode, and still, it decided it was going to crash on me, so... Unfortunately, Pikes Peak took itself out of the running for this season's schedule, and Nashville is going to step in 
and take its place. So it's going to be the second short track that we will be at here so far this year. Bristol, of course, was the first one. And in that race, we saw it was all about track position. Will that be the case here tonight? We'll have to see, as at Bristol, we ran 150 laps. This track's just a little bit longer than Bristol, and we're running 120 laps, so there may be a little bit more sense of urgency for those guys at the back to move their way to the front, but we'll also have to see if pit strategy will come into play. Like, how clean of a race are we going to have here today? We're going to have to wait and see Ryan Butcher is going to line up on the pole position for this one. He'll be alongside of Carson Gum. Now, these two teams are very interesting starting up on the front row. Why? Well, if we take a look at our point standings coming into this one, we've got nine different teams that have gone to victory lane in the first nine races. But the 78 and the 19 team are the first two that have not. There you see, third in the overall standings and fourth in the overall standings without victories. Right now, those two teams would be battling for the final playoff position on points as things stand right now. And they're only two points separation and they have to share the front row together. So that will make things very interesting. But you take a look at some of these teams right now that at this point in time have locked themselves playoff positions with the victories. Of course, the 8 team has been stellar this year ever since Matt Haas parked it in victory lane in the Daytona 500. Last week, we saw Alex Tanker put the 27 car out of Joanne Allen Motorsports in victory lane at Michigan, and they jump up to second in the point stands. The 16, the 93 team, all with victories, courtesy of Zach Rogers and William Micros. And as we look a little bit further down, you've got other teams that have victories. The 32 team right now 12th in the point stands. The 11 team currently sitting 17th, so they've actually been picking it up the last couple of weeks. This was a team that was mired down outside the top 25 about three or four weeks ago. You got the 74 and the 48 teams, 19 and 20th right now they would sit in playoff positions with their victories but then you've also got down here the 77 team out of auto junction racing that's the only team so far that does not have um, themselves up inside the top 20 that has a victory and look at some of these teams right here that are going to look to get themselves out of the cellar some strong teams and strong drivers that race for them uh, the 21 team the 31 the 2 the 39 the 15 team we were looking at legend racing with Danny Wells Benjamin Miles and Tim Walsh Benjamin Miles a multi-time Duracell Cup Series race winner thought this team was going to be really strong and right now they are the furthest down of the teams that have started every race this season in 27th position 44 team out of four race enterprises we saw riley or reggie fogelman rather last week with a really good performance a top five in his debut at michigan daniel silva the team owner going to take over the driving duties here tonight in his duracell cup series debut so we'll wait and see how he does but enough talk let's go down trackside for pre-race ceremonies Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we wash were so Not going to take them long to get around this half mile racetrack, so we're going to fly through your starting lineup here tonight at Nashville. Pole center Ryan Butcher alongside of Carson Gum, Benny Watson, and James Qualls to make up row two. Row three with Cody Lamas and Phil Parker. Cole Baker and Michael Wayne Robinson in row four. Completing the top ten are going to be Dylan Young 
and Pedro Luca Trey Wright 11th, Amanda Evans in 12th, Charles Sanford, Kyle Matthews, and Keith Batson make up the top 15. Jesse Turner 16th, Cody Smart in 17th, Matt Haas in 18th, debuting Daniel Silva 19th, 20th will be Austin the Plant. Row 11, Nick Gunther and Joshua Osborne. Levi McIntyre and Carter Friesen back in row 12. Tim Walsh and Jack Mitchell in row 13. Then Dylan Pote, Patrick Smith, and Andrew Lemke bring up the rear of the field. 120 laps here tonight under the lights at Nashville Speedway. It's debut on the Duracell Cup Series schedule. Let's roll. Ryan Butcher going to lead the first lap. Second place changes hands. Carson Gum had his hands full with Benny Watson, but holds him off for the time being. James Qualls going to clear Cody Lamas for the fourth spot. Battle will be for sixth. Cole Baker on the inside. Phil Parker on the top side. Wide several places through the field, but these drivers giving some pretty good room here through the corners. Realizing this is going to be a long race. You don't want to tear up your equipment this early on for sure. This battle for six, you've got uh, drivers, teams that have already gone to victory lane. Cole Baker putting the 11 car in victory lane back at Atlanta. And the 74 team with Phil Parker behind the wheel this week. Went to victory lane back at Phoenix with Bradley Ream behind the wheels. So these are right now some of your front runners to try and find their second trip to victory lane here this season, which I honestly feel if you're going to make it in the playoffs, you've got to have two victories. Three victories is a luxury, but you're going to have to have two victories because think about it. Nine races into the season, nine different drivers have gone to victory lane. And we've only got 10 spots available in the playoffs. So theoretically, 90% of your playoffs have been already locked, well not locked up, but they are occupied. Unlike most times when we come to racetracks and we have previous race winners and statistics to be able to go over for you guys, that's not the case here tonight. Since it's the first time that we've been to Nashville, nobody has ever won here at this racetrack under the Duracell Cup Series banner. So, whenever we come to a brand new racetrack, that just puts a little bit more incentive for the drivers to want to be the first one historically to have captured that checkered flag. And Ryan Butcher trying to do just that here. So far, Odd Junction Racing with a victory this year. Roberto Crown Jr. back at Las Vegas. This is the second entry out of the Odd Junction Racing stables. They'd love to be the first team to actually have both cars with a victory. Granted, they're a two-car team, and so you look at other multi-car teams and the chances of them doing that, it's going to take them a little bit more races uh, to be able to reach that feat. But, you know, at the same time, though, I mean, you consider the level of competition we have here in the Duracell Cup Series, even for a two-car team, that's quite a feat. Everything is rather single-filed out here. Let's see if we can find any battling going on, and there is some. This is back around the 19th, 20th position where Nick Gunther makes his way around Levi McIntyre, following in the tire tracks of Daytona 500 winner Matt Haas. Tim Walsh was trying to also take advantage of that inside line on McIntyre, but not able to. Carter frees into the inside of Austin LaPlante. This is for the 24th position, and I think you're going to see a lot more side-by-side -side battling back here towards the rear of the field in the case that these guys realize that if we go into a long green flag run, since these drivers are all bunched up and the braking zones are going to be different, not able to put down the optimal lap times that they want, they could be in danger of falling a lap down early in this race. I mean, Lemke just now hitting the start finish line, and there you see your race leader, Ryan Butcher, going into turn three. So right now, Lemke is more than half a lap down at this point. Let's see about the lap time here 18.23 for Lemke and a 1787 for Ryan Butcher. So yeah, that's what, four tenths of a second thereabouts that Ryan Butcher is running faster than the tail end of the field. So he is flying. And that's going to make things interesting here for the race lead as well. When the leaders catch lap traffic, because remember we saw uh, Ryan Acosta be really good at making his way through lap traffic back at Bristol. 
nobody was really able to challenge him as a result. We'll see if Ryan Butcher is going to be able to be so lucky. He's been able to hold Carson Gum to about half a second, but Carson's not really lost touch with him. Carson's running similar lap times to Ryan Butcher, and so too is Benny Watson, both of them keeping pace with the 78. But Nashville is a rhythm track. It's not a track where you can look at a driver and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna gain two tenths on him here in this corner. No, this is a, a racetrack where you gotta gain hundreds, maybe even thousands, and slowly, methodically make your way up there. Because if you try and gain tenths into a corner, you are going to over smoke that left front. You are gonna slide up in the corner. You're gonna have to bail out of the throttle and you're gonna end up losing more time than you gain. Nashville is a really fun short track. I can say that from personal experience. But you cannot let the racetrack beat you. You have to be smarter than the racetrack. We have ourselves a pretty good battle for fourth here in a few moments. James Qualls, Cody Lamas, Phil Parker, and Cole Baker all separated by about half a second. That's from fourth back to seventh position right now. And we talked about some of those teams that are struggling in the point standings. Uh, one of those teams that is not too far back from this is the 21 car of Pedro Lucas. Trying to get that team up there in the point standings. They came in 22nd in points, and there you see him right now. Last car inside of the top 10. Dylan Young just up ahead of him there in the two car. That team, 24th in the point standings. If you look back at last season, the drivers that they have racing for this team, Adam Garcia, RJ Bishop, and Dylan Young, there were five victories combined between those drivers last year. Two for Dylan Young and three for Adam Garcia. But so far, a goose egg in the win column for the Deuce. James Qualls and the 17 team, obviously a little bit of a fire lit under them after last week. They're second team car, the 27 car, going to victory lane with Alex Tanker, so you gotta think that they'd love to be able to win in back-to-back -back weeks and put both of those Joanna Atwood Motorsports Ford Mustangs into playoff positions. As I'm watching that race lead slowly get chiseled away, what was half a second has now been Chip down to a little less than four tenths. Let's see if it closes down this time. Nope, that time Carson loses about two one hundredths. I don't yet see the tail end of the field in that camera shot down the back straightaway. And nor that time looking down the front straightaway. So let's see what's going on here in the tail end of the field. Lemke still running last car. Definitely, as I said, a race all about track position for sure. There's last week's, well, last week's race winning car. Joshua Osborne driving that car here this week and right now in the 26th position. Tim Walsh still in a dog fight for 21st with Levi McIntyre. There's Daniel Silva. Let's give him a little bit of TV time making his debut in the Duracell Cup Series. We saw Reggie Fogelman, his teammate, in his debut with a top five run last week at Michigan. And right now, the only Dodge Challenger in the field, currently running in the 18th position at this point in time. And Jesse Turner in the 47. Second entry out of Lake Effect Autosport. Charles Samper in a battle for 12th position with Amanda Evans. 0-3 team is 11th in the point standings. Mentioned about the uh, 11 team out of TCW Racing, how they uh, really have picked themselves up the last couple of weeks and moved up in the point standings. There you see Cole Baker right now in the seventh position. Well, you could also say the same for the 0-3 team. It was actually the 0-9 team out of S3 Motorsports that seemed to be the best car in the early going of the season up inside the top 10. Well, now S3 Motorsports 0-3 team has bypassed the 0-9 team. 0-3 team 11th and the 0-9 team 13th in your current point standings. There 
you saw there down the back straightaway as Ryan Butcher was about halfway down the stretch, Lemke was going into three. So we will start to have traffic come into play and that can make things very interesting this battle for the race lead as we are a quarter of the way through this race. There's the 32 of Benny Watson. Mentioned the fact that this is the second short track stop on the season. The first one was won by this car, Ryan Acosta, going to victory lane at Bristol. So, Benny Watson looking to put the 32 car in victory lane in back-to-back -back short track starts. You gotta wonder if this might be the same car that uh, Ryan Acosta won at Bristol in, and they just repainted over the livery. If not the same car, certainly probably running a similar setup with how dominant Ryan Acosta was back at the world's fastest half mile. Ryan Butcher continuing to pace the field. If we're looking at tire fall off with the lap times, in the early going with the fresh rubber, Ryan Butcher was laying down 17 eighths. That last time by, he ran an 18 one. So three tenths of a second lost in terms of grip and in terms of speed as these tires begin to wear down and they will just uh, continue to fall in speed. As this run goes on, we did not really get to see Pitt Road play a big factor into the outcome of the Bristol race because of the fact we had that untimely yellow flag and it really shuffled the field up. We ended up having, what was I think, three or four of the lead lap cars back behind the rest of the field with the timing of the yellow, so it made things rather disorganized. We'll see if maybe here tonight, if we're going to see any green flag pit stops and if they will play their part into who's going to win this race. We're staying here with the race leader just because I'm noticing that the gap between him and the last car on the lead lap, tail in the field, Andrew Lemke continues to close up. And you see that Carson Gum still has maintained about four car lengths between himself and the race leader. So if Ryan Butcher has any problem with the upcoming traffic, Carson Gum is certainly going to be within striking distance to take advantage. So we may see our first lead change of the night, which is why we're staying at this point in time up at the front of the field. Not much has changed inside of the top 10. The best battling is still going on around that fourth position with Qualls, Lamas, Parker, and Cole Baker. Taken on board with Ryan Butcher. Listen to how he gets through the gears making his way around the short track as he starts to close in on traffic. has been reeled in by the race leader Ryan Butcher. He'll look to the inside of Andrew Lemke. See if he can get the power down. A couple of things that I was observing there as we watched the onboard with the Gatorade Toyota Camry. Number one, he was in fourth gear the entire time, which is not unusual here at Nashville. Many people would think, well, it's a short track. Why wouldn't you be downshifting in the corners? The car is actually a lot more stable if you keep it in fourth gear, and there's not a whole lot of difference in lap times if you run in third gear or fourth gear. Third gear, you're gonna get a lot more wheel spin off of the corner as well the longer you get into a run. So I'm not surprised to see him staying in the fourth gear. The other thing I noticed as well, when he came off a of turn four a couple of times, you heard him really bail out of the throttle. That is pretty much the trouble spot here at Nashville Speedway especially as the tires start to wear because instinctually as a driver, you want to get back to the throttle as soon as you possibly can, but there's no guarantee that those rear tires are going to take in terms of the grip you want. They start to slide, the back end wants to come around. You gotta bail out of the throttle to be able to make sure you catch it and don't end up bending into the outside walls. So really cool to see there with that onboard with our race leader, just all the different things that we know Nashville does to the race car, to the driver, and to those Goodyear tires all coming into play here almost 50 laps into this run. 
Butcher did a great job there getting around Andrew Lemke. Carson Gunn was closing up the gap a little bit, but he then had to deal with the 12 and the little contact there between Benny Watson and Andrew Lemke is Watson maybe a little frustrated that he can't get around Lemke, the lap machine, and he is, as a result, going to probably start losing some ground to the top two. A lot of times we will see where if a driver is battling to stay on the lead lap, they will race the race leader very hard, but then they'll start letting second, third, fourth place on by. That's not the case here for Andrew Lemke is now. Brian Butcher going to work on the 0-1 of Jack Mitchell. Adrenaline Motorsports, Jack Mitchell, 15th that team is in the overall standings coming into this one. That was another team that was rather slow at the beginning of the season in terms of where they were in the point standings. They picked it up in the last couple of weeks, but track position was not a friend to them here tonight after they rolled off 26th from the grid. And so, unfortunately for Jack Mitchell, getting reeled in here this early and, well, not yet a lap down. He's still doggedly battling on the top side trying to pinch the 78 down not allowing Ryan Butcher to get back to the throttle as soon as he would like it looks like Butcher may have him cleared ooh Carson Gum you saw him slip up the racetrack there and that's going to cost him some time as he's not even going to be able to complete the pass yet around Jack Mitchell so Ryan Butcher we'll see if he's going to be able to pull away with maybe his biggest advantage of the race oh nope Mitchell messed up turn four Carson Gum able to complete the pass Seen a lot more slipping and sliding around here as well than we saw in the early going. And also observe here, Ryan Butcher running maybe about a half groove higher there, right up in that dark gray, not down against the yellow line like he was earlier on this race. There you see, pulls down to the yellow line, it drifts up. So having to adjust his racing line here. Now this will be interesting. Next car that he's going to reel in will be Patrick Smith in the 77. That is a teammate to Ryan Butcher. So would he battle his teammate to stay on the lead lap or would he let the 78 on by and then maybe try and play as a pick to separate Ryan Butcher from Carson Gum? 77 team already has a victory this season with Roberto Crown Jr. However, that team is also the lowest of the former race winning teams in the point standings, 21st overall. So. They need every point they can possibly get for sure. Doesn't look like, at least for the moment, they're going to be finding victory lane for the second time this season. So this is going to be interesting to see what the mentality is going to be for Patrick Smith. Benny Watson was able to get around Andrew Lemke. He's just now caught up to Jack Mitchell, though. James Qualls has been able to gap himself from fifth place on back as he was able to get around Lemke pretty quickly. Now Lemke getting bypassed by Cody Lamas, Phil Parker, and Cole Baker. So James Qualls firmly in control of the fourth position, and who knows, might be able to get up here and try and snipe a podium spot away from Benny Watson as, here we go, Patrick Smith has been caught, and it doesn't look like he's going to let his teammate on by any too easy. There might have been some contact right there between the right front of Butcher and the left rear of Patrick Smith. We had Carson Gum jump to the outside of Ryan Butcher. Is that going to work? He's alongside of him. What a move by Carson Gum, pinning the 77 to the inside. He's trying to push the 77 on by. He's going to do so. Carson Gum led that lap. That's the first lap that Carson's led all night, running this race mostly in second, and this could be the move of the race. We're halfway through, and look at the 32 of Benny Watson. Because these guys are side by side, he's closing in. We could have a three-car battle for the lead as Kyle Matthews hits pit lane in the 0-9 halfway through this race, and we may be seeing green flag pit stops coming to play here at Nashville. Oh, and Ryan Butcher just wrecked his teammate up into the wall, collecting Benny Watson. Caution is going to fly. Trouble between the teammates. And the caution is going to wave for the first time tonight. Several drivers were on pit road, and much like Bristol, 
right in the middle of green flag pit stops. The yellow flag is going to wave. Ryan Butcher, a lot of damage. Benny Watson, all torn up on the front. That's two drivers that were running in the top three at the moment of caution. Oh my goodness. Ryan Butcher obviously frustrated that his teammate wasn't letting him by. He was in danger of losing the lead. And he hooked Patrick Smith on the back straightaway. And that didn't work out for either one of them. There's Ryan Butcher. I think his day is done. He's trailing smoke. And the pole sitter's day is over. This race just took an entirely different landscape in terms of its outlook. Let's go back and see what happened. As Carson Gum wins the battle off of Pitt Road. My heavens. Well, short tracks breed short tempers, we know that, but very seldom do we see it take place between teammates. And I think this is going to be a running story for the next couple of weeks. Take a look at this one. This was coming off of turn two. And Patrick Smith trying to pull down low. Ryan Butcher says, nope, hooks him in the left rear, and the contact made there sends the 70 back up the track, hits the wall, and oh, you see Benny Watson, he saw that Butcher was coming back up, he's on the brakes, but when you've been running this many laps, the car's not going to stop on a dime, those right tires, or those uh, front tires, they are so worn, and a lot of damage to the front end of the, uh, the Hurst Chevrolet Camaro. And I'm wondering here, does Patrick Smith pull up to the 78 after the contact. Does this keep going? Oh boy. Yeah, he's gonna pull right up to the back bumper. Look at that. Hits him in the in the rear. Ooh boy. Ooh, would love to be a fly on the wall of the Auto Junction Racing Team Room this week. Take another look at it real quickly here. Let's see what Benny Watson saw. In the 32 car. Just nowhere to be able to go. Boy, that is a tough, tough break there for Benny Watson. A tough break for Ryan Butcher. And just like that. We have uh, an entirely different looking running order again, much like we ended up having happen back at Bristol. We've got drivers on the tail end of the lead lap. James Qualls, Michael Wayne Robinson, and Matt Haas on the top side ahead of race leader Carson Gum. Lap cars of Kyle Matthews, Tim Walsh, Jack Mitchell, Andrew Lemke, and Patrick Smith on the inside. So green flag back in the air. A little less than half the race to go, and Carson Gum, the race leader, Finds himself kind of boxed up there on the top side. Cody Lamas restarted second as we're three wide back there. With Phil Parker and Cole Baker. Ooh, Lemke right in front of the field hitting pit lane. Everyone had to check up. Dylan Young fifth. Jordan Lopez is up to sixth. Or correction, that's Trey Wright rather in sixth. And Pedro Lucas, Keith Batson. Cody Smart and Amanda Evans. That's your top 10 right now. There's Tim Walsh. He's trying to get his lap back from Carson Gum. Benny Watson's back on pit lane in the 32 car. There's a little contact maybe there between the 19 and the 15. Kyle Matthews hoping for a yellow flag to come out. He's gotten his lap back. Jack Mitchell to the inside of Tim Walsh. That was for position. Another car also got by Carson Gum to get his lead. Uh, slap back, uh, James Qualls, Michael Wayne Robinson, and Matt Haas. So they'd love to see a yellow flag right now. They would then cycle back around to the tail end of the lead lap. As Cody Lamas almost chopped off the nose of Jack Mitchell a couple of laps ago. Almost went around off the nose of the 0-1. Tim Walsh not going to let Carson Gum get away. And if you're Cody Lamas, what do you do? Do you stay on the top side with the race leader? Do you try and follow Tim Walsh around on the bottom? Looks like it's going to be the top side that Cody Lamas chooses to try and get around the 15. Carson Gum will finally get himself clear of the traffic. The 
fallout of that incident. Ryan Butcher out of the race. You saw Benny Watson again there on pit lane. More repairs going on for him. He is currently two laps down. I think he just fell a third lap down. Andrew Lemke has been to pit road a couple of times as well. Something to miss on the 12 car right now. Two laps down to the race leaders. Cody Lamas finally going to clear for the, well, he is in the second position. I think the caution might be out. It is. Yellow flag waves. Big break from drivers like Kyle Matthews and Matt Haas, Michael Wayne Robinson, James Qualls. They will all be back on the tail end of the lead lap, I do believe. Unless Kyle Matthews was two laps down. I think Matthews was two laps down. So we got one of his two laps back there. And what brought out the caution is the question. Is there some... Contact being made here on the back straightaway. I see LaPlante, Carter Friesen, Charles Sanfer all have some damage. And I don't know if that is from the stack up that just took place there on the back straightaway or if that's from what actually brought out the yellow. Let's go back and see. Carter Friesen's heading for pit lane. Now it looks like there was a stack up there that caused Carter Friesen's issue. I think Charles Sanfer, though, might have been. In the vicinity of what brought out the caution? No, he was not. It was actually Phil Parker in the 74. And he's going to get himself a little bit of help. It's a Trey Wright in the 38. Going to get him in the left rear quarter panel. Spins him around on the front straightaway. Everybody able to avoid as he stays down there on the inside lane. We'll take a look at the stack up in just a moment as well. Is on board with Phil Parker. Oh, you heard him really having to lift out of the throttle there, coming off a of turn four, and uh, apparently he was not able to get off the final corner as well as Trey Wright. That's what led to that contact. And then we mentioned the fact that there was a stack up on the back straightaway involving Austin the Plant, Carter Friesen, and others. See if we can figure out just how much damage was sustained here. So they were back around the 16th, 17th position. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it was Phil Parker. Phil Parker ran into the back of Carter Friesen, who then in turn got into the back of the 48. And the reason that that took place was Phil Parker was trying to go back up and get his position. Remember, he spun across the start-finish line, what we showed you there with that replay. The caution was already out before he crossed the start-finish line. So theoretically, he was in, they're saying 19th when the caution came out. So he was going back up to get his position back, and I guess they didn't realize he was coming around the top side. I don't know why you would fly around other cars at a short track as congested as it is to get your position back. Do it slowly. Let Give them time to know that you're coming. But uh, Carter Friesen's now on pit road, and he's got a lot of damage. And, oh, we've just had a, another wreck. What just happened there? That was Phil Parker. Jack Mitchell getting into him. What the heck happened here? Watch this. This was literally just seconds ago. Phil Parker. Well, actually, it looks like Phil may have turned himself off the nose of Jack Mitchell. So Phil Parker's not endearing himself to some people here right now, it looks like. As uh, we've gotten the one to green signal. So let's go back to live action. Oh, things are all really messed up, though. Green flag back in the air, and uh, I don't think they figured out what they were supposed to do there for that restart. That did not look pretty. They were three wide coming across the start finish line. This, this is not good. According to scoring, we've only got six drivers on the lead lap right now. Oh man, they are beating and banging on each other here. Three wide, the caution's back out. Which in all honesty, I don't think is a bad thing. That might, I don't know if there was an incident or if uh, race officials decided we gotta throw yellow and figure this out. Oh no, we actually did have something happen on the back straightaway, but uh, that was that was an ugly looking restart. And it looks like Austin the Plant may be the reason for this one. I'm not sure why we've got only six drivers on the lead lap. 
Again, I think we might have had another issue with where that caution came out with half the field across the start finish line and the other half not yet across the start finish line. It's certainly shaping up an awful lot like Bristol as Charles Samfer is going to spin Austin LaPlante in the 48. And that's what brings out the caution. So, let's see if we can figure out everything that happened there under that caution period. Yeah, I think that the drivers, well, actually I'm a little bit confused about it now because Tim Walsh is being scored a lap down in the seventh position and he was a lap machine two cautions ago. Everybody else here scored a lap down. There were a couple of guys that were up there inside of the top 10. Well, I'm not necessarily certain how they arrived at what they did as far as the scoring, but right now, officially, six drivers on the lead lap. Carson Gum, the leader. Cody Lama, second. Cole Baker, third. Dylan Young, fourth. Trey Wright and Keith Batson in fifth and sixth. And then the second car running in line, the 15 of Tim Walsh. He is the first car one lap down in seventh. Jack Mitchell in 8th, Cody Smart in ninth, and Nick Gunther right now would be in the 10th position. So I'm not sure how they're going to figure all this one out at the end of the race, but I do know that there is a second driver in the garage here at Carter Fries, and after that stack up, I think he uh, will probably be having some words with one Phil Parker when this race is concluded. As Phil pretty much taking him out, he's going to join Ryan Butcher back in the garage area. I want to remind everybody that the Back to Bristol GoFundMe is currently going on. You can enter yourself into the running for a 124 scale diecast. If you donate $5 or more, the link to the GoFundMe is down in the description. We've also got some other special things coming up. It's going to be actually a uh, new series that's going to be starting up where people that have donated to the GoFundMe will be able to uh, sign up for it. It's going to be an exciting one. And we also are going to be having uh, some, some other special things going on for uh, people that donate to GoFundMe. So head on over there. Whatever you're able to donate is appreciated. Link once again is in the description. Lights out atop the pace car. We're getting closer to 30 laps to go. Carson Gum and that 19 team, the defending champion of the series, trying to say, hey, I want another shot at that championship trophy. We've also got All-Star Race break coming up here in a few weeks as well. A win would lock you into that as the green flag back out here at Nashville. Wow, Tim Walsh had his hands full there, and now he's in the middle three wide with Patrick Smith on the bottom. Cody Lamas on the top. Oh, Smith almost looped it there. As he got really loose on the inside of the 15. And Cody Lamas is boxed in. Nowhere to go. Dylan Young trying to get to the inside of Patrick Smith. He's making the move for third on Cole Baker. He's now looking to do the same for second place on Cody Lamas. But Patrick Smith kind of almost blocking him there off the corners. Saw what Ryan Butcher was willing to do to his teammate in the 77, move him out of the way. Dylan Young may get to that point. Dylan Young's got some right side damage, I noticed there as well, and he's going to hook the 77. Patrick Smith's left rear quarter panel is not finding any love here tonight. And it looks like now the battle for third is going to clear the 77 car. It will be Baker versus Young as they look ahead to second place, Cody Lamas. Trey Wright in the fifth position. Ways back to sixth place, Keith Batson. So he's just trying to make his way around the lap traffic. Got some battling for position going on here. Nick Gunther trying to get by Cody Smart, who in turn is trying to get up there to Jack Mitchell. That's a three-way battle for the eighth position. And Gunther is going to take ninth place from Cody Smart, at least for the moment, off of turn two. 
How about Daniel Silla? We saw Reggie Fogelman last week with a top five run at Michigan. Daniel Silla in his debut. About to crack up into the top 10 if he can get up there to Cody Smart and Nick Gunther. Benny Watson just logging laps right now in the 32 car, just trying to finish the best position he get, can. Remember, that team already has a victory, so they are not only just focusing on more trips to victory lane, but they also are focusing on points. They gotta be up there in the point standings. As Cody Lamas trying to get around Tim Walsh. Right now, Walsh is holding up second, third, fourth, and fifth from getting up there to the race leader and battling for this checkered flag. Got a feeling that Cody Lamas isn't going to wait long, though. Tim Walsh has got damage. And he is obviously running slower than the race leaders. Carson Gum enjoying every lap, though, that Tim Walsh holds them up as he's going to pull away by over a second. Interesting that Carson Gum at this point in time, already running lap time similar to what we saw the leaders running 30 laps into this race. He was on pit road, what, about 20, 15, 20 laps ago for fresh tires, so I'm surprised that his lap times haven't picked up. But then again, he might be just trying to preserve those tires. Save something for if Cody Lamas and company get by Tim Walsh and start reeling him in. Now the bad news for Cody Lamas and company is if they don't get around Tim Walsh, they get a caution with 10 to go. The field is basically lined up the way they are with the lap machines all integrated into the lead lap cars, so they would still have to deal with the 15 on a late race restart. So I think that you know sooner rather than later, you want to make this pass. But Tim Walsh is doing a good job of keeping that rear bumper pretty wide. Now, while, while I understand Tim Walsh wants to make sure he runs the best lap times possible and everything, I'm not certain why he would battle these guys, because he doesn't have to worry about them. He's not on the same lap as they are. The car that he has to worry about is Jack Mitchell, and Jack Mitchell is all the way back here. So even if he let those four drivers by, I don't think it, was, it would really hurt him in terms of losing the seventh position. So a little bit surprised that he's not actually pulling up high letting these guys on by, let them get up there and battle for the race win, unless there's some kind of a, an alliance that's going on between himself and Carson Gum. who knows? Right now though, it's two Chevrolets, a Toyota and two Fords that complete your top five. Keith Batson looks like he will be finishing sixth position here tonight. A former winner at Richmond. The corners here remind me an awful lot of Richmond, so no surprise to see him doing well here at a track like Nashville. But he is right now the last car on the lead lap, and he's got two-thirds of a racetrack between himself and Tim Walsh, who would be the seventh-place car. So really, there is no battle for sixth. Well, it's been an up-and-down night for drivers out of Pigeon Racing. Benny Watson there was en route to what was going to be, if not a top three finish, maybe at least a top five run. We've not really heard much out of the 31 car of Dylan Pote this evening. Carter Friesen is back in the garage area, so kind of a 50-50 here this evening for uh, Pigeon Racing. Let's see if we can actually find the aforementioned Dylan Pote. See where he is. There he is right now. A lap down the 16th spot, trying to hold off Andrew Lemke. That would not be for position. Lemke is several laps down. Charles Sanford just made his way around Amanda Evans for a 17th. There's still a lot of battling for positions going on here on the racetrack. James Qualls now trying to make his way by Amanda Evans. Remember Qualls and Matt Haas and Kyle Matthews and I think uh, it was what Michael Wayne Robinson all got laps back a couple of cautions ago. Right now, Qualls in 19th, Haas in 20th, and Robinson in 21st. But all currently, uh, they are one lap down. Where's the 0-9 of Kyle Matthews? Did I miss him here in the go-through? Oh, there he is. Right now, he's in 25th, battling with Phil Parker, but they are not on the same lap. Parker is, I believe, two laps down. 
Oh, he is one lap down. Last car one lap down. Kyle Matthews is two laps down. I don't look now, but Carson Gum is closing in on that duo we just saw there of Phil Parker and Kyle Matthews. So this race may, may not be over. Battle was on for second. Cole Baker had a big run on Cody Lamas. Couldn't complete the pass. Now Trey Wright looked at the inside of Dylan Young for fourth. Nothing doing there. Going to try again through three and four. Ooh, almost a little contact between those two as they come off the final corner. Dylan Young with the preferred line here on the top side. Trying to get back to the throttle sooner, and I think he'll have Trey Wright cleared once again before they get to turn three. Cody Lamas getting held up by Tim Walsh. Slowed his momentum. Cole Baker thought about looking to the inside, not able to do so. Oh, remember we talked about the fact that uh, the 32 car was trying to win back-to-back -back short track races. Well, Pigeon Racing might be able to win back-to-back -back short track races if Carson Gum can complete these final eight circuits as he just completed lap 112. Phil Parker, Kyle Matthews on the back straightaway. Carson Gum just now exiting out of turn number two, but he's got over two seconds back to the second place battle, which once again is between Cole Baker and Cody Lamas. So I don't know even if Carson Gum does catch those lap down machines, if he would be stuck behind them long enough for Baker, Lamas, Dylan Young, Trey Wright to be able to capitalize. Baker's gonna make the pass. Baker's gonna complete the pass on Cody Lamas. Now can he complete it on Tim Walsh? I don't think he's gonna have enough time to reel in Carson Gum, but this is a strong move late for the 11 car. Not able to complete the pass yet. Oop, Tim Walsh way up the track there through three and four. Might open the door for Cody, Cole Baker to clear him. Nope, not yet. Look at Cody Lamas beating on the back bumper of the 15, trying to get him loose as they go into one and two. Slow car coming back in the track. That's Benny Watson, but he's going to pull back down below the apron and head back for pit lane. Whoa, Tim! We almost had ourselves a spin. Trey Wright was into the left rear quarter panel of Dylan Young. They're off of four. Almost spun him. And Cole Baker now firmly in control of second place. But he's trying to still get around Tim Walsh. Three laps to go for Carson Gum in the 19. That team's been strong this year with Charles Belding and Matthew Rodriguez joining Carson Gum. They were fourth in the overall stands coming into this race. 19 points out of the overall points lead. They just haven't found victory lane yet. And Carson Gum looks like he may be about to get them their first win of season five as Cole Baker is now firmly in control of second place battle for third between Dylan Young and Cody Lamas. But Carson Gum about to come around. He returns three and four and he will see the white flag. One lap to go. Spent the first half of this race running mostly in second. Got up alongside of then race leader Ryan Butcher on the top side. They were battling for the lead before Butcher got into it with his teammate Patrick Smith. And after that it's been all Carson Gum from now to the checkered flag. Carson Gum. Off of turn number four, he will win the first race ever here in the Duracell Cup Series at Nashville Speedway. The defending Duracell Cup Series champion only waits four starts into this season to take yet another checkered flag as the rest of the field crosses the start finish line. Six drivers will finish on the lead laps. Very interesting things taking place here tonight at Nashville. But in the end, Carson Gum will be the only driver that can boast he's taken a checkered flag so far in his career at the track known as Nashville. Here's a look at the finishing results from this evening's race. Cole Baker, great run there for the 11 team as they continue to try and climb their way up in the point standings. Cody Lamas, solid outing there in third. And how about Dylan Young and Trey Wright? Good runs for both of those drivers. Dylan Young and that two team, 24th in points. Of course, uh, the 38 team with former champion and Jordan Lopez that drives for them. 
Trey Red, a former Daytona 100 winner, 10th in the overall points, so they will move up a couple more positions. Keith Batts will be the last car to finish on the lead lap. That's another team that was struggling, 25th in points. So the two team and the 39 team going to rake in some really valuable points positions here this evening, as will the 15 team. Tim Walsh, yes, he finished a lap down, but it will be a top 10 finish. And that was a team that was 27th in points, last of the cars that have taken green flags ever since the season opener at Daytona. I believe that might be their first top 10 finish of the season as well. I'll have to check back and find out if that is the case. How about some of these guys we really didn't talk about tonight? Bringing it home with really good runs, either just inside or just outside the top 10. Jack Mitchell in 8th. Nick Gunther up there in ninth. Cody Smart brings it home in the 10th position. The debuting Daniel Silla. I'll tell you what, keep it on the 44 team. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head who it is that uh, is the secondary driver for the 44 team, and I can't right off the top of my head remember who it is, so um, you know, we'll see him next week, obviously, but you got a top five run for Reggie Fogelman, a top 11 run here for Daniel Silla. Watch out for this 44 team. They may find victory lane in the next couple of weeks, the way they're going right now. Joshua Osborne, one week after the 27 car goes to victory lane at Michigan, brings it home 12th place here tonight. Joshua Osborne started deep in the field as well, as I recall. I think he was... Uh, he was quite a ways back. I'm checking to see here. Yeah, he was 22nd on the grid. So a great run for him here tonight. Jack Mitchell was 26th. Tim Walsh was 25th. So a lot of these guys did a really good job of making their way up through the field despite their lack of track position in the early going. Jesse Turner brings home 13th. Pedro Lucas in 14th. Levi McIntyre was 15th. The rest of the top 20. Dylan Pote, Charles Sanford, Amanda Evans, James Qualls, and Matt Haas. Then you look at some of these other drivers, a lot of which had some good starting track position in this race, and it did not go the way that they expected. Obviously, Benny Watson, wrong place, wrong time, and the wreck that took place between the teammates Patrick Smith and Ryan Butcher. That took Ryan Butcher out of this race. Carter Friedson also out of the race after a stack up on the back straightaway. So Friesen and Butcher finished 28th and 29th. 27 drivers finished this race, but only six of them, as we documented already, on the lead lap. But I think we're going to have some uh, some rivalries and some discussions after this race heading into next week at Texas. I think Carter Fries and Phil Parker might be having a little bit of a discussion. I think that obviously there's going to be a big team meeting for Auto Junction Racing with Patrick Smith and Ryan Butcher. What we saw go on with them. It took Ryan Butcher out of uh, what potentially could have been a race win here tonight. It's a short track, short tracks breed short tempers, and they are anything but predictable. Bristol was unpredictable, Nashville unpredictable here tonight. So we'll see what happens with the fallout when we head to the Lone Star State next week. Should be a good one there. And uh, I'll tell you what, I think Nashville here tonight definitely uh, is a track that we may be coming back to. Next season, very impressive in the way that the racing was. Very exciting racing, never a dull moment. And I'm looking forward to seeing if that's going to be on the schedule back when we come back in uh, season six. But congratulations once again to Carson Gum, the defending champion, gets his seventh career Duracell Cup Series victory and first year of season five, putting the 19 team, at least for the moment, in a playoff position. Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's race here from Nashville Speedway. If you did, be sure to give a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We have shown you full finish your results. We'll show you the fallout of the point standings in the pre-race next week at Texas Motor Speedway. And once again, be sure to head on over to the link in the description, the Back to Bristol Go Fund Me, to be able to be in the running for a NASCAR 124 scale diecast, as well as uh, have your name in the running for special events that are going to be coming up here in the next few weeks and months. But until then, I've been Seth Cole. Thanks for joining us here tonight at Nashville Speedway. Until next time, you've been watching another production of the NSCRA Offline Racing at its best. <laughs>